Welcome back to Timo's Dinky Detailing. It's time for Andrew Price's Maple Leaf Customs Porsche 4 Build-Off. Every year Andrew Price has this uh, invitational and uh, just requires a Porsche to be done. I found this one. It's a real toy made in China and I got it for very cheap at the flea market. Well, you may have seen I had a preview of some of the toys that I got. So this one has been earmarked for this year's Porsche competition. I use the Google uh, search where you take a photograph and Google finds out what it is and it turns out it's a 1999 Porsche Boxster. I think it's a good looking casting so let's go ahead. So as usual the first step is to remove the bottom. This one has two rivets on it and I'm just going in with the hand drill in this case and which isn't the best idea because I had a little bit of trouble because of course it's going to skate off of the post which it did there uh, so getting it off uh, I found that I was actually having I was I had a lot of trouble and I was actually breaking off these little tabs that stuck in so here it comes apart and uh, the windshield is riveted in so I get out the uh, Dremel tool and this tiny uh, carbide burr and remove the top of that very carefully. I don't want to damage that windshield because it's in excellent condition. So there it comes out. And now for paint stripping. It goes into my container with some boiling water and some caustic soda to strip the paint. So this is an interesting model because after the caustic soda nothing happened. It made no impression at all uh, except maybe some of the detailing might have come off a bit, this, the uh, headlights. So I'm not going to be able to get that paint off so I'm just going to sand it down a little bit and then I will paint over top of the original coat. Now the, the toy I'm going to make is going to be a race car. Uh, that seems to be the popular theme on these uh, uh, Porsche challenges. And so this one needs to have a air dam on the front. So I made one out of polystyrene and it's a couple of levels. And I glue them together and I'm going to put them onto the front of the car using some uh, two part five minute epoxy. So I'm making it look simple, but actually it took a long time to get that thing uh, on there properly and sanded and smooth and so first goes the primer coat onto that purple paint that it started out with now online I was looking for this car in race livery and this is the car that I found beautiful red and green now I was running out of paints and not having any luck with my local dealers so I got some stuff off of the internet and I wanted to try out if it was any good and I had a lot of trouble painting with this stuff. Uh, I wound up having to thin it quite a bit and I think I didn't even thin it far enough. And this was supposed to be uh, airbrush ready paint. And I, I'm kind of new to airbrush even, even if I've been doing it for two years. But it came out kind of pebbly. And I figure I'm gonna be okay because I'm gonna sand it down and then I'm going to put uh, lacquer over top of it and make it smoother. Now, I taped the top so that that roof you could see was red and uh, it's going to stay red and the rest of it I put some more primer on top and on goes the green. So I think the colors uh, and I use them straight out of the bottle because there's a lot of choice in that batch that I bought of the cheap paint uh, and I think I got the color pretty good and you can see that pebbly surface and I don't show you all the sanding of it, but I wound up sanding it down. And I found this, uh, this car, you can see, it was for sale. And so the great thing is I've got all the detail and I can find all of the uh, logos that are on it so I can match them using my decals. So this was a very fortunate choice because it was my first choice. It was the best looking car of this model. And so I made up some some decals quite a bit of quite a few of them 
and it's and it's a bit of a challenge doing these things so it took a long time to get this whole thing ready and I'm just showing you a tiny bit of the work in getting these things onto the car so the white layer goes on first and then my my decals color decals go over top and on this one it says I've had to look it up it says Rebecca racing and so I'm doing these things and I'm thinking okay I've made it Rebecca racing and so I, I went to look it up later and I'll I'll show you when I get there you can see the the trouble these tiny tiny decals I'm, I'm used to working with the dinky toys which are your larger scale and this is a size like a like a Hot Wheel toy so it's a challenge getting those little decals in the right place. So when researching all of these uh, decals, I found that on the back, there's the big uh, double R's and it's for Rebecca Racing. So I looked up what Rebecca Racing is, uh, Rebecca Racer, and it's actually a young lady, uh, Rebecca Jackson, and she had a four year goal of reaching uh, Le Mans. And she did race in the 2016 24 hours at Le Mans. Uh, I'll, I'll attach the link to this article and you can read about her career. She also raised money for the uh, for breast cancer research and for the Ayrton Senna Institution. So the detailing of this is is a challenge but the but there's a nice clear areas uh, where the headlights and taillights are so it makes it a little bit easier to go to those edges and not mess it up now these front indicators and the the taillights with the uh, backup lights are a bit of a challenge because then there's nothing you just have to paint a stripe across across the silver surface I've had trouble with these before but I think on this model I did a pretty good job now the original wheels are in good shape but they're kind of shiny and I wanted them to be more like the ones that were on the race car which uh, I put the metallic dark gray color which I really love and I'm going to use that also on the spoiler and here's how the they attach there's a little groove that holds them and I want to lower the whole body and so I'm just moving I'm just taking part off of the body where the where the axle goes in and having it set deeper about a about a millimeter deeper and in the end I think I should have gone a little bit further but I didn't so I wanted to take apart the interior so I could work with that but it turns out that thing is welded in there the dashboard and the steering wheel so I thought you know what I'm not going to try and take it apart I painted the whole thing black and then I go in and I detail the seats at least the center part to make them red like some racing seats now the windshield is in good shape but it is scratched up a, a fair bit so here I go with micro mesh starting with 2400 and start sanding it down you have to do this layer by layer I have to do all four windows so I'm speeding it up by rushing through them uh, but you have to do it thoroughly on each level because if you miss any of the one grit behind then you're never going to catch up again you have to get everything off with each grit as you go along so other people use uh, simpler methods they use the paste and um, paste polishing wax I have some of that and I find it's not as effective and you wind up spending more time trying to polish it with the stuff that's that's too fine so in this case I go all the way to the 12,000 and it comes out beautiful like brand new windshield. All the scratches were removed in the early stages. And there you have it. Now on the top of the, of the windshield there's a sunshade with the Porsche logo on it. And then there's some Porsche Drivers Club as well. They're obviously sponsoring her car. Or she's a member of the club, I don't know. So 
So get that thing straight. And now we go to reassemble. So I pop that window in and I don't put any glue under the window because if somebody wants to take it apart again, uh, it's easier if the glue is just on the outside holding it holding it from from the outside alone so it can be removed and I glue these in I had to straighten these axles that was actually pretty easy just with a couple pairs of pliers and just bend them gently and they they straightened out okay so now I put those in with uh, with the two-part uh, five-minute epoxy but I don't make sure that the wheels are uh, the axles in the right space so the wheels aren't going to be rubbing on the base or on the on the bodywork so that's why I put that base there so now it's all dried up and ready to reassemble the base goes on and what I'm using to hold that base on uh, is JB Weld and JB Weld is beautiful stuff. It's a two-part epoxy, contains some steel particles or something, and it's very strong. It's also, it's not a five-minute epoxy. You have to let this one harden overnight. So this is the last thing you do in the day. Uh, I go and I put some of this JB Weld on the bottom. And then I leave it overnight. Now, in the meantime, I designed a, uh, a spoiler because this car has a spoiler on the back. And here's how I wash my parts. I dip it into the into the alcohol, but that alcohol is so saturated with the uh, with the resin that I spray it with with uh, some clean alcohol, and that keeps the keeps that big bottle filled right up so there's my there's my uh, spoiler and it goes in to the infrared light and gets hardened now I'm using this uh, Syria tech resin it only takes uh, one minute to harden it you don't want to put it longer and here's the paint I used for the wheels this is uh, this is a beautiful uh, metallic it's supposed to be supposed to be red <laughs> it's not red at all but it says red on the label but I love this stuff it always looks gorgeous wherever it goes so that this way the the wheels are going to match the finish on on the spoiler you can see I've attached the spoiler it's hard to paint this thing it's very tiny and I want to paint the whole thing except for the two pads that sit right on the rear deck so I put it on this little solo uh, shot glass and paint it that way and it's on there with some double-sided sticky foam tape so that worked well for me and now to put it on I go to the usual which is my five minute epoxy this is the one I get from the dollar store it's better than the expensive one you get at the at the big hardware stores And then I got to place that real carefully and get it straight and in the right position. There we go. So just to remind you of what it looked like when it started out, you might remember that this was my uh, find at a uh, flea market by the highway. And let's see what it looks like now. There we go. Now it's a beautiful race car. And uh, I think it came out beautiful. And this is going to go to the son of my workmate. And I think he will enjoy this one. So I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed this episode of Timo's Dinky Detailing. Until next time, be seeing you.